Welcome to the second day of Intergeo 2021 Hybrid. We will be broadcasting live from the exhibition halls in Hanover and reporting on what's going on here. We're glad you're joining us on the digital platform. Every day you'll find out what you need to know to stay up to date with exclusive interviews and videos from the event. And at the same time, you have the opportunity to switch to the individual areas, such as the conference or the expo stage, depending on the ticket type. If you have any questions or suggestions or just want to chat, feel free to chat in the networking section of the digital platform. And in a few minutes, I'm looking forward to my first live guest in the studio, Matthias Motz from Phase One. But at first, we will start with uh, some insights into the conference. And Günther Knappe met Christiane Salbach, Managing Director of Intergeos Organizer DVW, and spoke about the conference highlights and today's focus on BIM. Christiane Salbach, gestern ist die Intergeo 2021 erfolgreich gestartet. Insbesondere auch die Eröffnung war beeindruckend, aber auch der erste Tag der DVW Conference, international, gestern auch englischsprachig, mhm. aber auch mit deutschen Referenten. Wie geht es weiter am heutigen Mittwoch? Also am heutigen Tag beleuchten wir in der Konferenz die Chancen und auch die Mehrwerte von Geodaten auf der einen Seite. Also Sie erfahren zum Beispiel, welche aktuellen Geodateninfrastrukturen oder welchen Stand die Geodateninfrastrukturen aktuell haben, aber auch wie die Weiterentwicklung zur Urban Data Plattform erfolgen kann. Und ähm, dabei kommt es uns vor allem auf das Datenmanagement natürlich an und auf eine effiziente Digitalisierung. Also man kann viel digitalisieren, aber man muss effizient digitalisieren. Das ist eben ein ganz wesentlicher Faktor, um damit schlussend schlussendlich ans Ziel zu kommen und eben den digitalen Zwilling für urbane Räume, aber natürlich auch für ländliche Räume durchaus aufzubauen. Insgesamt ist natürlich das auch ganz wichtig, wie das äh, im europäischen Kontext zu sehen ist, Digitalisierung. Ich gebe ein Stichwort GDI.de. Äh, welche ja. Rolle spielt das? Also die GDI.de wird natürlich auch im Europä oder in europäischen Vorhaben mit, ähm, mit äh, abgedeckt. Das sind zum Beispiel Stichworte wie Inspire. Ein Projekt, was schon lange ja. läuft, ähm, aber auch natürlich Green Deal. Wir können das nicht nur kleinräumig betrachten, wir müssen das europäisch betrachten. Ähm, Gaia X als weiteres ähm, Projekt und zum Beispiel auch die PSI-Richtlinie. BIM ist ein Stichwort, das bei der Intergeo immer schon eine Rolle gespielt hat. Sie haben in diesem Zusammenhang auch den digitalen Zwilling angesprochen. Wie weit sind da die Entwicklungen? Also ähm, bei ähm beim BIM sprechen wir am Mittwoch, den, also es wird unser BIM-Tag, sag ich mal, ähm, werden. Wir ähm, starten mit ganz spannenden ähm, Diskussionen und auch Informationen eben für alle, die am Thema BIM interessiert sind. Wir haben unter anderem in der Panel-Diskussion, die also den Start in diesen heutigen ähm, BIM-Tag darstellt, ähm, da arbeiten wir eben wie zum Beispiel ähm, die smarte Zusammenarbeit beim Bau funktionieren kann beim Planen und Bauen. Das funktioniert aber auch nur, wenn alle Beteiligten ihre Rollen klar verstehen. Und ich glaube, das ist noch so ein Aspekt, da können wir alle noch ein Stück weit dran arbeiten. Also ein spannender Tag, der BIM-Tag und mehr, kann man so fast sagen, in der DVW-Konferenz. Also hochspannende Aspekte. Und wir sehen uns noch mal, wenn es um den Donnerstag geht. Genau, vielen Dank. And now I'm glad to start with my first guest live here at the Intergeo TV studio. It's uh, Matthias Motz. Welcome and good morning. Good morning. So you're Vice President uh, EMEA at Phase One. So thanks for joining Intergeo TV. And um, Phase One is a Danish company with branches in Germany, USA, Japan and Hong Kong. And you told to my colleague that Phase One's roots are in photography. But please introduce yourself in a few words. So yeah. what you're doing okay. exactly, because you do it much better than me. <laughs> Yeah, so Phase One, as you said, is a, is a Danish company headquartered in, in Copenhagen and the roots are really in the professional photography, in the development of digital bags and digital camera systems. And I think 2012, we started to introduce our first aerial camera for the geospatial market. Mm -hmm. And um, since then, we have the two divisions, let's say, 
We have also a third division where we focus on uh, cultural heritage, mm -hmm. where we digitize old archives, images, uh, pictures, whatever. So, and these are still our three main uh, divisions of the company and the main focus areas where we have our, our business in. Okay, what is special do you present this year at Intergeo to who? To which uh, kind of area audience you're looking for? Well, we have two focus areas in the geospatial world. We are very much focusing on the classical aerial cameras. We have uh, components for, for aerial photography. We also have aerial systems. And our latest product, which is called the PAS 880, is an oblique camera system for, for aircrafts uh, where you can gather 3D data. Um, oblique imagery, so you can have the stereo photogrammetric uh, models, etc. Um, this is one focus area. And the other one is we have a drone camera where we have developed now a brand new gimbal system, active gimbal system for inspection tasks. So this is called a P3, phase one P3 uh, camera system. Uh, you can mount it on, on a rotary um, UAVs. And um, there you can do inspection tasks for power lines, for dams, for bridges, for whatever um, you, you want um, to see. Um, that's our, our latest product, yes. Thank you very much for that overview. And um, I guess, I think you told to my colleague that you're also specialized in uh, the forestry and agriculture. Yes. So what are you serving there? Yes, we have a four-band system, um, which is used for near-infrared uh, mapping for forestry and agriculture. Uh, but we also, and this is due to our high technology, high, highly advanced technology, we can really gather millimeter resolutions. And if you think about things like crop engineering, for example, where, where you want to really see the details, mm -hmm. um, this is uh, the, the camera you would use wow. for it. You because, can see it in one millimeter. Yes, yes. Ooh. And the good thing is, due to the high resolution, you can go up to 30 meters or so, um, instead of five, six meters with a normal, um, camera which you can go uh, shop in the in the market so it's safe and you still have this very high resolution you have a good productivity um, and again especially this crop engineering is a very very new let's say yeah, application mm -hmm. where it's a high focus on the on the market mm -hmm. so this is a, wow, a pretty pretty nice uh, application yes yeah, yeah. That's great. And Moritz, what do you think? We are here with the visitors. We are in the exhibition halls in Hanover because Intergeo last year was only on the digital platform. So mm -hmm. this year we really have um, a stage. We have audience. And so what do you, what do you think? How's the vibe? Um, people coming to Hanover, um, are there um, um, good conversations at your booth? Um, just summarize how you feel here at Intergeo uh -huh. in Hanover for the people who are just join us on the digital platform. First of all, I have to say it's a very good restart of mm -hmm. being at an exhibition. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm positively surprised. So it certainly it's a little bit more quiet than usual in, mm -hmm. the, in yeah. the past. Absolutely, no doubt. Um, but I think it's a good restart and it was really good to see the community yesterday. Um, we had pretty good meetings already. So we had greetings, uh, meetings pre-arranged. Which, which was great, but there were also, we had always traffic on the booth, so it was not too bad. And if I compare Tuesday with Wednesday, where usually Wednesday is much more, I'm really looking forward to, to have a great day today and to, mm -hmm. to see what's going. But yes, we are positive and we are happy that we have mm. decided to do this. <laughs> uh, it's always an investment. <laughs> yeah, of So we, ha we have to talk about money also when we, when we do such shows because we want to do it right. And uh, yeah, we, we are positive, absolutely. And we are looking forward, especially then to next year's full speed in the Geo again. Thank you for that statement. <laughs> Thanks for being here and joining us also here Thank at the Geo TV this morning. Yep. And I wish you uh, many good conversations. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs> <laughs> and we continue with an interview with Andreas Sinning. Yeah, that really depends on the area where you're looking at. That means where on the world you mm -hmm. are looking. In the Nordics, uh, I think they are very digital already. 
If you go further south, uh, it, it will be different. It's the same with the size of the pr projects. Large size already have a lot of in, uh, a lot of portion uh, in the digital part, and smaller sites are still done very, very manual. So if it's about the level of digitalization, mm -hmm. it's really a an, an, an very early phase. So it's quite different from the buildings. In buildings industry, we already have digitalization since several years, if you think about the BIM approach. For the infrastructure, it's quite new. So that the, that's due to the fact that handling infrastructure data is far more complex than handling data from a building. Okay, thank you very much. So, you just mentioned a bit, but what do you think are the biggest challenges the industry is facing and the, what opportunities do you see on the horizon when you have a look at the future of the construction sites and the digitalization of the industry? So, the, the challenges today are, it's a several challenges. One, one is definitely to bring all the different data in one common environment. So we have data from different sources, uh, which get, need to get to come together. Uh, that, that's a problem mm -hmm. because the data was not designed for, for that. So it needs definitions, it needs uh, uh, common exchangeable data formats, uh, which can be used. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is, is education. So we need the people on site being able to work with these procedures. So that's uh, a question to the education. So will coming engineers will have the capability to, to use this data to really to proceed and, and, and yeah, move forward to, to get, uh, uh, with these projects. Uh, that, that's something I, I think will be key if this can be successful in future. And uh, for the, the next steps, um, we'll be really finishing the first project in a complete uh, digital uh, environment. Mm -hmm. That would be my dream, really, to, to have one project managed on a digit, complete digital platform. I think that's a little bit far in future, uh, will not happen uh, immediately. But as soon as this has happened, I, I think we are at the, uh, at the stage that we can handle digital uh, construction site in this uh, kind of form. Yeah, that seems clear to me that you need the skills of the workers and uh, you need the education of the new systems, of the ecosystems and co uh, regarding connected data and so on. And yeah, but um, yeah, I have just um, another question. Um, so talking about the geospatial industry, what can the geospatial industry contribute to this development in this industry? Yeah. Yeah, we had an interesting conversation this morning after the, 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 the keynote and, and after the, the interview there. Uh, it was about where's the role of our geospatial industry in this environment. I was talking pretty much about infrastructure. But to me, the surveyor with his specific knowledge is the, one of the most important ones in this process because he has the knowledge how to handle coordinate systems which are the base for all projects. He has the knowledge to provide accuracy to these uh, systems. And I think the geospatial professionals, they have to, to bring their knowledge in and, and position them as one of the key persons in these projects, having the knowledge to make the foundation, the, the foundation for the data. And that comes from the cadaster, that comes from the surveyors in the field, that comes from the construction company. The surveyor is here really the central element in okay. this. And what role does new technologies like machine learning or the so-called artificial intelligence do play in that context? Yeah, so, so this, this comes in when it's about data analysis. Mm -hmm. So today um, you have the classic stakeout work, you have the classic data collection, but we see more and more the industry moving to, to mass data collection. So mobile mapping system gets used, imaging, so remote sensing, so you get a, a huge amount of data which you cannot analyze any longer in a manual way. And for, for analyzing this data, you need assistance from the IT technology. And here is where artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning algorithms come in to interpret the data and 
to, to deliver the results which we are no longer manual uh, are able to, to take out of the data. Andreas, let's have a look at this year's Intergeo, which was forced to one year break due to yeah. Corona. So last year we met on the digital platform. This year we're here in Hanover in the exhibition halls. And uh, yeah, so how is the vibe in your view or how, or how important is this industry gathering for the, for the geospatial industry or for the construction yeah. industry to really meet in person this year on this date? So to me, as I'm participating in the Geo and Geo since 1991, which is okay. well, 1992 in Hamburg. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It's quite a while. Mm -hmm. I've been at every. So we have a good overview. <laughs> yes, I have a quite good overview. To me, it's the 10th Intergeo. The 10th, okay. It's yeah. anniversary uh, as well. <laughs> yeah. So it's. I was really missing this because it was always the event in the year where we met people, uh, talked to people, which we usually don't meet during the year. Of course, we have customers where we have close relationships with, but it's like a family. And if you don't see the family for, for a while, uh, it's, it's not that nice. So I was really looking forward to meet people here in person. Uh, I had no expectations because nobody can tell us how many people are coming. It was clear that it's not the international event as it has been before, and we would like to get that, that back. But at least from, from Germany, uh, I think we will have the ability to talk a lot of people. So, perfect. We're at the end of this interview so that you have enough time to enjoy Intergeo and to have Thank good you. conversations and meeting. Thank you very much, Andreas Sinek. Thank you for the interview. I'm sure you know Intergeo's social media channels like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook or LinkedIn. And there's one colleague in my team who's responsible for that. This is Lennart Preuss. And Lennart is also this guy who is visiting at the digital platform, the exhibitors, the booths and talks to them what's new, what they are presenting. So we're excited who's Lennart going to visit today and he will take us on a virtual tour on the digital platform from Leonard. Good morning. Intergeo community. I'm back here in the Hall 23 together with the whole Intergeo communication team. And now I will show you the digital platform. So I hope you can see my screen right now. Looks perfect. After you log in, you will see this welcome platform of the Intergeo Digital. And there you will find a few of the basic informations, but normally I start here with the networking. So in the morning, I see, oh, I can see myself here, but when you scroll down a bit, I hope you can see the, all the morning news, the highlights from exhibitors, the highlights from friends and colleagues. And after that, I try to check out the expo stage because there are a lot of cool lectures, I think lots of news and there's the opening will start in I think 10 minutes. So yes, that's super cool and super easy to see and to watch the, the old lectures. And when you click here on the conference button and you have the, the right ticket for the, DW, for the DVW conference, you can click here and can watch all the conferences. And my own highlight is here, the Expo button. When you click on the Expo button, you will find here all the, the highlights of the big players and even a lot of smaller companies. And then I click on the view, the list. And then you can see all the exhibitors. And for example, I will click here on the all set GmbH. And then you can see their profile like you are used to from Facebook or from other social media things. And when you scroll down a bit, you will find here the room. There are a few companies, they have more rooms or different rooms. But if you click here on enter the room, you can start a video chat with the experts from this company. And that's my, my job, that's the thing I do normally. So later in the day, I will visit a few exhibitors, will show you 
different experts from, from the Intergeo out of the digital booths. And yes, I'm super happy and look forward to the Intergeo live and digital here in Hannover. And now I will give back to Denise and wish you all a good day. <laughs> Thanks, Leonard, for that overview this morning. And um, yeah, I just checked. We have about six lectures at the Expo stage today. So you should check right now the program here at the Button Expo stage. And of course, you can also join right now the conference, which will focus on uh, the topic BIM, building information modeling. Later on in the, uh, that day, we'll also talk to Ilka Mai, who's a real expert in BIM. And we will talk about what's new, what's state of the art. And so stay tuned and see you later. Thank you.